Question 1. What should the nurse do to assess the neurovascular status of an extremity cast from the ankle to the thigh? A. Palpate the femoral artery. B. Assess for a positive Hohmann sign. C. Compress and release the client's toenails. D. Instruct the client to flex and extend the knee. The correct answer, C. Compress and release the client's toenails. The rationale. Capillary refill based on the Blanche test is an accurate assessment for neurovascular integrity, immediate refill is expected. Question 2. A nurse is assessing a client who is experiencing postmenopausal bleeding. The tentative diagnosis is endometrial cancer. Which findings in the client's history are risk factors associated with endometrial cancer? Select all that apply. A. Obesity. B. Multiparity. C. Cigarette smoking. D. Early onset of menopause. Family history of endometrial cancer. F. Previous hormone replacement therapy. The correct answer, A, E, and F. The rationale. A. Obesity is a risk factor for endometrial cancer because adipose cells store estrogen, the extent of exposure to estrogen is the most significant risk factor. E. Although endometrial cancer has not been proven to have a genetic predisposition, it is more common in families who have gene mutations for hereditary nonpolyposis colon cancer, HNPCC. F. Endometrial cancer has a relationship with exposure to estrogen. Question 3. A client who has breast cancer had post-lumpectomy chemotherapy and is now scheduled for radiation on an outpatient basis. What is an important nursing intervention while the client is receiving radiation? A. Assess the radiated site daily for redness or irritation. B. Rinse the radiated site with an antibacterial solution after each treatment. C. Instruct the client to apply lotion twice daily to the skin on the radiated area. D. Encourage the client to wear a snug-fitting bra between radiation treatments. The correct answer. A. Assess the radiated site daily for redness or irritation. The rationale. Radiation is damaging to the skin and may cause it to become sensitive and friable. Question 4. A client's problem with ineffective control of type 1 diabetes is identified when a sudden decrease in blood glucose level is followed by rebound hyperglycemia. What should the nurse do when this event occurs? A. Give the client a glass of orange juice. B. Seek an order to increase the insulin dose at bedtime. C. Encourage the client to eat smaller, more frequent meals. D. Collaborate with the healthcare provider to alter the insulin prescription. The correct answer, D. Collaborate with the healthcare provider to alter the insulin prescription. The rationale. The client is experiencing the Samajayi effect. It is a paradoxical situation in which sudden decreases in blood glucose are followed by rebound hyperglycemia. The body responds to the hypoglycemia by secreting glucagon, epinephrine, growth hormone, and cortisol to counteract the low blood sugar. This results in an excessive increase in the blood glucose level. It most often occurs in response to hypoglycemia when asleep. The healthcare provider may choose to decrease the insulin dose and then reassess the client. Question 5. A client with the diagnosis of personality disorder with antisocial behavior is hospitalized. The client is openly discussing interpersonal difficulties with family members and the boss at work from whom money has been stolen. The client presently is facing criminal charges. Which behavior indicates that the client is meeting treatment goals? A. Expression of feelings of resentment toward the employer. B. 
Discussion of plans for each of the possible outcomes of a trial. See expression of resignation about difficult spousal and children relationships. D. Discussion of the decision to file a grievance against the employer after discharge from the hospital. The correct answer, B. Discussion of plans for each of the possible outcomes of a trial. The rationale. Since the legal difficulties were a precipitating event for hospitalization, if the client can realistically examine the possible outcomes of the trial, then some benefit has been gained from the therapy. Question 6. A client with severe preeclampsia is hospitalized. What should a nurse do first to ensure her physical safety? A. Decrease environmental stimuli. B. Place her on seizure precautions. C. Administer the prescribed sedatives. D. Strictly monitor her intake and output. The correct answer, B. Place her on seizure precautions. The rationale. This client can become eclamptic suddenly and have a seizure. Seizure precautions are necessary to protect her from injuring herself and the fetus. Question 7. Which statement by a client with type 2 diabetes indicates to the nurse that additional teaching about the diet is needed? A. I can eat as much dietetic fruit as I want. B. I can have a lettuce salad whenever I want it. C. I know that half of my diet should be carbohydrates. D. I need to reduce the amounts of saturated fats in my diet. The correct answer, A. I can eat as much dietetic fruit as I want. The rationale. The client needs further teaching, dietetic fruit is not sugar-free and must be calculated in the diet of an individual with diabetes. Question 8. A child is found to be allergic to dust. The nurse is preparing a teaching plan for the parents. What should the nurse include in the plan? Housework must be done by professional house cleaners. B. Damp dusting the house will help limit dust particles in the air. C. The condition must be accepted because dust in a house cannot be limited. D. The house must be redecorated because the environment must be dust free. The correct answer, B. Damp dusting the house will help limit dust particles in the air. The rationale. Although dust cannot be avoided completely, use of a damp cloth helps eliminate the quantity of airborne particles that might be inhaled. Question 9. A client who has just started on a regimen of haloperidol, Haldol, is observed pacing and shifting weight from one foot to another. What side effect does the nurse document in the client's chart? A. Akathisia. B. Parkinsonism. C. Tardive dyskinesia. D. Acute dystonic reaction. The correct answer, A. Akathisia. The rationale. Restlessness or the desire to keep moving, akathisia, can occur within six hours of the first dose of Haldol. This side effect is associated with most neuroleptics. Question 10. A client who has been on a psychiatric unit for several weeks continually talks about delusional material. What response by the nurse is most therapeutic? A. Ask the client to explain the delusion. B. Allow the client to maintain the delusion. C. Encourage the client to focus on reality issues. D. Explain to the client why the thoughts are not true. The correct answer, C. Encourage the client to focus on reality issues. The rationale. Discussing reality-based issues helps decrease delusional and hallucinatory activity by reducing feelings of isolation and competition for sensory awareness. Question 11. 
a client has a tonic-clonic seizure. What is the priority nursing intervention during the tonic-clonic stage of the seizure? A. Go for additional help. B. Establish a patent airway. C. Turn the client on the side. D. Protect the client from injury. The correct answer, D. Protect the client from injury. The rationale. This, together with observation and documentation of the seizure activity, is the primary nursing care for a client with a tonic-clonic seizure. Question 12. A nurse admits an adolescent to the psychiatric unit with the diagnosis of anorexia nervosa. What is the primary gain a client with anorexia achieves from this disorder? A. Reduction of anxiety through control over food. B. Separation from parents secondary to hospitalization. C. Release from school responsibilities because of illness. D. Increased parental attentiveness related to massive weight loss. The correct answer, A. Reduction of anxiety through control over food. The rationale. The client controls anxiety by maintaining a childlike body build and by demonstrating mastery over food intake. Question 13. A nurse is caring for a newborn with a myelomeningocele. What should immediate nursing care for this infant include? A. Changing diapers immediately when moist. B. Placing the infant in the reverse Trendelenburg position. C. Applying sterile, moist, non-adherent dressings to the sac. D. Positioning the infant prone with the legs slightly adducted. The correct answer, C. Applying sterile, moist, non-adherent dressings to the sac. Rationale. This is done to prevent drying and breakage of the sac, any opening increases the risk for infection to the central nervous system. Question 14. Oxytocin, pitocin, augmentation via IV piggyback, IVPB, is prescribed for a client in labor after a period of ineffective uterine contractions. What nursing interventions are most important if strong contractions that last 90 seconds or longer occur? Select all that apply. A. Stop the infusion. B. Turn the client on her side. C. Notify the health care provider. D. Verify the length of contractions. E. Administer oxygen via a face mask. The correct answer, A, B, C, D, and E. Rationale. A. Discontinuing the oxytocin, pitocin, infusion lessens uterine stimulation and decreases intrauterine pressure, continuing the oxytocin may lead to fetal hypoxia, placental separation, or uterine rupture. B. Turning the client onto the side increases oxygen perfusion to the fetus. C. The healthcare provider should be notified to obtain additional orders. D. Contractions lasting longer than 90 seconds warrant stopping the oxytocin infusion to prevent uterine rupture. E. Oxygen administration will increase oxygen to the placenta and fetus. Question 15. The cervix of a client in labor is dilated 8 cm. She tells a nurse that she has a desire to push and is becoming increasingly uncomfortable. She requests pain medication. How should the nurse respond? A. Help her to take panting breaths. B. Prepare the birthing bed for the birth. C. Assist her out of bed to the bathroom. D. Administer the prescribed butorphanol, Stadol. The correct answer, A. Help her to take panting breaths. Rationale. This is the appropriate breathing technique for the transition phase, it prevents the client from pushing too early. Question 16. 
a nurse administers an intramuscular injection of vitamin K to a newborn. What is the purpose of the injection? A. Maintains the intestinal floral count. B. Promotes proliferation of intestinal flora. C. Stimulates vitamin K production in the baby. D. Provides protection until intestinal flora is established. The correct answer, D. Provides protection until intestinal flora is established. Rationale Vitamin K prevents hemorrhagic disease of the newborn because it activates coagulation factors in the liver. Intestinal flora, which synthesizes vitamin K, is absent in the newborn because the GI tract is sterile. With feeding and adaptation to the environment, intestinal flora becomes established. Question 17. A child with acute post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis requests a snack. Which is the most therapeutic selection of food the nurse can provide? A. Peanuts. B. Pretzels. C. Bananas. D. Applesauce. The correct answer, D. Applesauce. Rationale. Applesauce provides nutrition without large additional amounts of potassium and sodium. Question 18. A client reports experiencing nausea, dyspnea, and right upper quadrant pain unrelieved by antacids. The pain occurs most often after eating in fast food restaurants. Which diet should the nurse instruct the client to follow? A. Low fat. B. Low carbohydrate. C. Soft textured and bland. D. High protein and kilocalories. The correct answer, a low fat. Rationale. The presence of fat in the duodenum stimulates painful contractions of the gallbladder to release bile, fat intake should be restricted. Question 19. A person sustains deep partial thickness burns while working on a boat in a town marina and seeks advice from the nurse in the first aid station. The nurse encourages the client to seek medical attention, but the client refuses. The nurse advises the person to go to a health care provider if A. Blisters appear B. Urinary output decreases C. Edema and redness occur D. Low-grade fever develops The correct answer, B. Urinary output decreases. Rationale Decreasing urinary output indicates hypovolemia that results from a fluid shift from the vascular space to the burned area. Question 20. A client with a history of gambling has legal difficulties for embezzling money and is required to obtain counseling. During an intake interview, the client says, I never would have done this if I had been paid what I am worth. What factor will create the greatest difficulty when assisting this client to develop insight? A. Feelings of boredom and emptiness. B. Grandiosity related to personal abilities. C. Projection of reasons for difficulties onto others. D. Anger toward those who are in authority positions. The correct answer. See projection of reasons for difficulties onto others. Rationale. The development of insight is impeded by the client's unwillingness or inability to face his own contribution to a problem. Question 21. A nurse is working with a client who has the diagnosis of borderline personality disorder with antisocial behavior. What personality traits should the nurse expect the client to exhibit? Select all that apply. A. Engaging. B. Indecisive. C. Withdrawn. D. Manipulative. E. Perfectionists. The correct answer, A and D. Rationale. A. 
Clients with borderline personality disorders initially tend to be engaging and to establish intense relationships. D. These clients may be manipulative because they are opinionated and they want people to conform to their agenda. Question 22. A client has a urinary retention catheter in place after surgery. What should the nurse do when planning for the client's safety needs in relation to this device? A. Empty the bag every 6 hours. B. Maintain the tension on the tubing. C. Keep the system closed at all times. D. Attach the bag to the side rail of the bed. The correct answer, C. Keep the system closed at all times. Rationale. A. Closed. Sterile drainage system reduces the likelihood that microorganisms will be introduced into the bladder. Question 23. What is the most important test the nurse should check to determine whether a transplanted kidney is functioning? A. Renal ultrasound. B. Serum creatinine level. C. White blood cell count. D. 24-hour urinary output. The correct answer, B. Serum creatinine level. Rationale. Serum creatinine concentration measures the kidney's ability to excrete metabolic wastes. Creatinine, a nitrogenous product of protein breakdown, is increased with renal insufficiency. Question 24. A pregnant adolescent at 10 weeks gestation visits the prenatal clinic for the first time. The nutrition interview indicates that her dietary intake consists mainly of soft drinks, candy, french fries, and potato chips. Why does the nurse consider this diet inadequate? A. Caloric content will result in too great a weight gain. B. Ingredients in soft drinks and candy can be teratogenic in early pregnancy. C. Salt in this diet will contribute to the development of gestational hypertension. Denutritional composition of the diet places her at risk for a low birth weight infant. The correct answer, denutritional composition of the diet places her at risk for a low birth weight infant. Rationale. The diet does not reflect a healthy diet with a variety of foods, especially protein, Adequate nutrition is necessary for the birth of a healthy full-term infant whose weight is appropriate for gestational age. Question 25. A nurse in the prenatal clinic is assessing a woman at 34 weeks gestation. The client's blood pressure is 166 over 100 mm Hg and her urine is plus 3 for protein. She states that she has a severe headache and occasional blurred vision. Her baseline blood pressure was 100 over 62 mm Hg. What is the priority nursing action? A. Arrange transportation to the hospital. B. Obtain a prescription for an antihypertensive. C. Recheck the blood pressure within half an hour. D. Obtain a prescription for acetaminophen to relieve the headache. The correct answer, A. Arranged transportation to the hospital. Rationale. The client has severe preeclampsia, which develops suddenly with a blood pressure of 160 over 110 or higher and proteinuria of plus 2 to plus 3 or more. Severe headache and blurred vision are typical symptoms. The client needs immediate treatment to prevent eclampsia. Question 26. A child has cystic fibrosis. Which statement by the parents about their plan for the child's dietary regimen provides evidence that they understand the nurse's instructions? A. I will restrict fluids during meal times. B. I will discontinue the use of salt when cooking. C. I should provide high calorie foods between meals. D. I should eliminate whole milk products from the diet. The correct answer, C. 
I should provide high calorie foods between meals. Rationale The caloric intake should be 150% to 200% more than the expected intake for size and age, because absorption of fats and nutrients is compromised by the disease process. Question 27 A nurse is caring for a client with glaucoma. What rationale associated with the need for treatment of this condition should the nurse include in a teaching program? A. Total blindness is inevitable. B. Lost vision cannot be restored. C. Use of both eyes usually is restricted. D. Surgery will help the problem only temporarily. The correct answer B. Lost vision cannot be restored. Rationale Retinal damage caused by the increased intraocular pressure of glaucoma is progressive and permanent if the disease is not controlled. Question 28 A nurse is caring for a client with a below the knee amputation. What should the nurse encourage the client to do to prepare the residual limb for a prosthesis? A. Abduct the residual limb when ambulating. B. Dangle the residual limb off the bed frequently. C. Soak the residual limb in warm water twice a day. D. Press the end of the residual limb against a pillow periodically. The correct answer, D. Press the end of the residual limb against a pillow periodically. Rationale. The client usually is instructed to do this to toughen the limb for weight bearing. This process is begun by pushing the residual limb against increasingly harder surfaces. Question 29. A client is admitted to the hospital with a diagnosis of an exacerbation of asthma. What should the nurse plan to do to best help this client? A. Determine the client's emotional state. B. Give prescribed drugs to promote bronchiolar dilation. C. Provide education about the impact of a family history. D. Encourage the client to use an incentive spirometer routinely. The correct answer, B. Give prescribed drugs to promote bronchiolar dilation. Rationale. Asthma involves spasms of the bronchi and bronchioles, as well as increased production of mucus. This decreases the size of the lumina, interfering with inhalation and exhalation. Bronchiolar dilation will reduce airway resistance and improve the client's breathing. Question 30. A healthcare provider orders daily sputum specimens to be collected from a client. When is the most appropriate time for the nurse to collect these specimens? A. After activity. B. Before meals. C. On awakening. D. Before a respiratory treatment. The correct answer, C. On awakening. Rationale. During sleep, mucus secretions in the respiratory tract move slowly toward the throat. On awakening, increased ciliary motion raises these secretions more vigorously, thus facilitating expectoration and the collection of sputum specimens. Question 31. Which factor is essential to consider when a nurse evaluates whether a unit environment is conducive to psychologic safety for a confused client with dementia? A. Needs are met entirely. B. Nursing care is flexible. C. Realistic limits and controls are set. D. Physical surroundings are clean and orderly. The correct answer, C. Realistic limits and controls are set. Rationale. Confused clients find comfort and security in an environment that provides realistic limits and controls because this reduces the need for self-regulation. Question 32. A client is extubated in the post-anesthesia care unit after surgery. For which common response should the nurse be alert when monitoring the client for acute respiratory distress? A. Restlessness. 
B. Bradycardia. C. Constricted pupils. D. Clubbing of the fingers. The correct answer, a restlessness. Rationale. Inadequate oxygenation of the brain may produce restlessness or behavioral changes. Question 33. What clinical findings does a nurse expect when assessing a child with acute laryngotracheobronchitis? Select all that apply. A. Fever. B. Crackles. C. Hoarseness. D. Barking cough. E. Inspiratory strider. The correct answer, A, C, D, and E. Rationale. A. Fever is a common finding with acute laryngotracheobronchitis. C. Hoarseness is caused by edema of the mucosa of the larynx. D. The cough is tight, with a barking, metallic sound due to laryngeal edema. E. Children with acute laryngotracheobronchitis experience inspiratory strider because of laryngeal edema. Question 34. An IV infusion of magnesium sulfate is prescribed for a client with severe preeclampsia. The dose is twice the usual adult dose. When a nurse questions the dosage, the health care provider insists that it is the desired dose and directs the nurse to administer the medication. How should the nurse respond to this directive? A. Administer the dose and monitor the client. B. Withhold the dose and notify the nurse manager. C. Administer the dose and document it on the client's record. D. Withhold the dose and notify the director of the obstetric department. The correct answer, B. Withhold the dose and notify the nurse manager. Rationale. Administering the incorrect dose would be an act of negligence that may endanger the client, and the nurse would be liable. If the dosage is not changed after the health care provider is questioned, the nurse should contact the nurse manager. Question 35. A client who is lying in the supine position while in active labor has an IV oxytocin, pitocin, infusion and external monitors in place. Using the monitoring strips below identify the appropriate nursing interventions. Select all that apply. A. Administer oxygen. B. Turn the client on the side. C. Increase the rate of infusion. D. Discontinue the oxytocin infusion. E. Request a prescription for an antibiotic. The correct answer, A, B, and D. Rationale. Increased maternal oxygenation increases oxygen available for the fetus. B. The side-lying position decreases cord compression, which improves circulation to the fetus. D. This will decrease uterine activity. Five contractions in eight minutes does not allow enough time for uterine relaxation and reperfusion between contractions. Question 36. Which nursing action should be included in the plan of care for a child with acute post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis? A. Encouraging fluids. B. Monitoring for seizures. C. Measuring abdominal girth. D. Checking for pupillary reactions. The correct answer, B. Monitoring for seizures. Rationale. Cerebral edema from hypertension or cerebral ischemia may occur, which may cause seizures. Question 37. A nurse is caring for an older adult who is taking acetaminophen, Tylenol, for the relief of chronic pain. Which substance is most important for the nurse to determine the client is taking because it intensifies the most serious adverse effect of acetaminophen? Alcohol. B. Caffeine. C. Sa Palmetto. D. St. John's Word.
the correct answer, A. Alcohol. Rationale. Too much ingestion of alcohol can cause scarring and fibrosis of the liver. 85-95% of acetaminophen, Tylenol, is metabolized by the liver. Acetaminophen and alcohol are both hepatotoxic substances. Metabolites of acetaminophen along with alcohol can cause irreversible liver damage. Question 38. The parents of a child who is dying of cancer ask the nurse whether they should tell their 7-year-old son that his sister is dying. What is the most appropriate response by the nurse? A. Your child cannot comprehend the real meaning of death, so don't tell him until the last moment. B. Your son probably fears separation most and wants to know that you will care for him, rather than what will happen to his sister. C. You should talk this over with your health care provider, who probably knows best what is happening in terms of your daughter's prognosis. D. Your son probably doesn't understand death as we do but fears it just the same. He should be told the truth to let him prepare for his sister's possible death. The correct answer, D. Your son probably doesn't understand death as we do but fears it just the same. He should be told the truth to let him prepare for his sister's possible death. Rationale. Children at early school age are not yet able to comprehend death's universality and inevitability, they fear it, often personifying death as a bogeyman or death angel. They need an opportunity to prepare for this. Question 39. A nurse is caring for an underweight adolescent girl who is diagnosed with anorexia nervosa. What are common characteristics of girls with this disorder that the nurse should identify when obtaining a health history and performing a physical assessment? Select all that apply. A. Fatigue. B. Pyrexia. C. Tachycardia. D. Heat intolerance. E. Secondary amenorrhea. The correct answer, A, and E. Rationale. A. Fatigue occurs because inadequate nutritional intake results in electrolyte imbalances and decreased RBCs. E. Amenorrhea occurs because of endocrine imbalances resulting from starvation, it is thought that severe starvation damages the hypothalamus. Question 40. A client with major depression is admitted to the hospital. What is the most therapeutic initial nursing intervention? A. Introducing the client to one other client. B. Requiring participation in therapy sessions. C. Encouraging interaction with others in small groups. D. Conveying an attitude of concern that is not intrusive. The correct answer, D. Conveying an attitude of concern that is not intrusive. Rationale. This approach allows the client to control the pace of development of the nurse-client relationship. Question 41. During the first trimester, a client tells a nurse at the prenatal clinic that she frequently feels nauseated. What should the nurse teach her about reducing the nausea? A. Eat small, frequent meals. B. Take an antacid between meals. C. Drink cinnamon tincture before rising. D. Take dimenhydrinate, dramamine, at bedtime. The correct answer, A. Eat small, frequent meals. Rationale. An increased amount of the human chorionic gonadotropin, HCG, hormone may cause nausea and vomiting during the first trimester, the stomach should be neither too full nor too empty. Small, more frequent meals usually relieve the nausea. Question 42. A nurse is caring for a client with a history of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD. What complications are most commonly associated with COPD? A. Cardiac problems. B. Joint inflammation. 
see kidney dysfunction, d peripheral neuropathy. The correct answer, a cardiac problems. Rationale. Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, causes increased pressure in the pulmonary circulation. The right side of the heart hypertrophies, core pulmonal, causing right ventricular heart failure. Question 43. A new parent asks a nurse how to care for the baby's umbilical cord stump. What should the nurse include in the teaching? A. Expect a moderate amount of drainage. B. Keep the area moist with sterile normal saline. C. Provide sponge baths until the stump falls off. D. Cover the site with a small sterile dressing twice a day. The correct answer, C. Provide sponge baths until the stump falls off. Rationale. This is done instead of immersing the baby in a tub of water because the moisture may retard drying of the cord stump and may delay its falling off, the cord usually falls off by one to three weeks. Evidence-based practice research presently is being conducted to determine whether tub baths should be permitted. Question 44. After resection of a lower lobe of the lung, a client has excessive respiratory secretions. Which independent nursing action should the nurse implement? A. Postural drainage. B. Turning and positioning. C. Administration of an expectorant. D. Percussion and vibration techniques. The correct answer, B. Turning and positioning. Rationale. This action does not require a health care provider's order and is an independent action. Question 45. A health care provider explains a cystectomy and an ileal conduit to a client with invasive carcinoma of the bladder. Later the client expresses concerns about the possibility of offensive odors associated with this procedure. What is the best response by the nurse? A. Tell me more about what you are thinking. B. Products are available to limit this problem. C. This is a problem, but the surgery is necessary. D. Most people who have the surgery share the same concern. The correct answer, A. Tell me more about what you are thinking. Rationale. This open-ended statement focuses on the client's concerns and allows further verbalization of feelings. Question 46. Using Piaget's theory of cognitive development, what should the nurse expect a six-month-old infant to demonstrate? A. Early traces of memory. B. Beginning sense of time. C. Repetitious reflex responses. D. Beginning of object permanence. The correct answer, D. Beginning of object permanence. Rationale. The concept of object permanence begins to develop at about six months of age because of brain development and experience. Question 47. An internal fetal monitor is applied while a client is in labor. What should the nurse explain about positioning while the monitor is in place? A. The most comfortable position can be assumed. B. Monitoring is more accurate in the side lying position. C. The monitor leads can be detached when sitting on the bedpan. D. Maintaining a supine position holds the internal electrode in place. The correct answer, A. The most comfortable position can be assumed. Rationale. Because electrodes are placed internally, on the fetal scalp, not on the mother's abdomen, position does not affect the monitor. The side lying position is recommended because it promotes maternal fetal circulation, but it is not essential for accurate internal fetal monitoring. Question 48. 
During a newborn assessment a nurse reports a sign of respiratory distress. What clinical manifestation did the nurse identify? A. Flaring nares. B. Rapid heart rate. C. Abdominal respirations. D. Decreased respiratory rate. The correct answer, a flaring nares. Rationale. According to the Silverman-Anderson Index for Respiratory Function, flaring of the nares indicates respiratory distress, it is a compensatory mechanism to increase the intake of air. Question 49. On the third postpartum day, a woman who is breastfeeding calls the nurse at the clinic and asks why her breasts are tight and swollen. What should the nurse consider before explaining why her breasts are engorged? A. There is an overabundance of milk. B. Breastfeeding probably is ineffective. C. The breasts have been inadequately supported. D. The lymphatic system in the breasts is congested. The correct answer, D. The lymphatic system in the breasts is congested. Rationale. This occurs prior to lactation, it is an exaggeration of venous and lymphatic circulation caused by prolactin. Question 50. A person on the beach sustains a deep partial thickness burn because of a severe sunburn. What is the best first aid measure that a nurse should instruct the person to apply before seeking health care? A. Cool, moist towels. B. Dry. Sterile dressings. C. Analgesic sunburn spray. D. Vitamin A and D ointment. The correct answer, A. Cool, moist towels. Rationale. This will decrease edema and minimize pain. <laughs>